Ash. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god, shiny is Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mr. Gaming Counselor, and today we have a brutally honest review of Into the Light for your beautiful faces. That's right, another brutally honest video. And with that, let us begin. With that, let's start with some pros, right? I usually do some cons at the beginning. We're going to mix it up. We're, let's talk about the positive, then we can talk about the negative, and then we will get into some key thoughts, right? So if you want to look at the, the timeline, I will try to have some timestamps for your beautiful faces down below. Now, I just want to start off praising Bungie. This is probably one of the best free to play activities. That's right, free to play. Usually what Bungie does is free to try. Destiny is a free to try game, not a free to play because they let you sprinkle a little bit, you know, taste a little bit of the activity, but then you have to upfront the money for the rest of the experience. Into the Light is a whole package that is for free. It doesn't matter if you're a veteran, doesn't matter if you're a new player, you could make a new account right off the rip and you can jump right into Into the Light and enjoy it in its entirety. That is fantastic. Not only that, but you can enjoy the Whisper Quest, which is also awesome because it's probably one of the best quest exotic missions in my opinion opinion in the game that when zero out comes out as well which let's kind of move into the exotic missions right let i know i have a lot to talk about onslaught we're talking about positive if you enjoyed the whisper you are going to love it about the same nothing is really altered or changed except for some secret hidden things outside of that it's functionally the same the big difference is toward the end, where instead of having an all-out gauntlet fight with the bosses, they've actually made it easier where you can just shoot and fight the bosses one at a time. Or you can just pop them all, kill them all, get a nice little triumph for doing that. Either way, you kind of have your flavor of choice on how to deal with the mission at the end. But there is secrets, you know, plot twist. If you don't want spoilers, uh, this is a review. So one, two, three. They are at a new boss. There is a new boss encounter. It's not anything extravagant, but it is an extra piece of the mission that wasn't there. And it's cool. I like that. I like that we have something else to do besides just a little small boss. Like, I don't even know if you call them bosses. They're more like majors, but you do have a five boss at the end, which is awesome. I, I, I appreciate the mission. It was fun. It was enjoyable. I'm glad they didn't mess up the theme they didn't jack with anything overall legend feels about the same it's even with our current power level in the sandbox it felt challenging at times you still will get your butt clapped if you're goofing around it also doesn't pull any punches by pulling people forward so if you screw up and you're you left your part your teammate behind well they're just on their own and i think that's cool because it makes you have to coordinate it as a team and if you play solo you're gonna feel it so legend all around was more fun in my opinion it is more challenging the experience itself you can do solo and normal you could probably do it legend too but you're gonna have to min max again i really enjoy this mission i'm glad it's back whisper i mean it did get a all around buffs and being able to craft it maybe in the future it will have a moment to shine and when it does it has now utility and with more ammo in its economy, all around buff. What about Zero Hour? It's not out, Mr. Gaming Counselor. How can you ever talk about Zero Hour? It's not out yet. Yes, it's not out yet. You are precise. However, Whisper fundamentally didn't change except for like a small tweak. I expect the same for Zero Hour. So if you enjoyed the experience of Zero Hour, it's going to be the same. Except for maybe a few more enemies or different ads like the Briggs. Overall, overall, the, the the mission itself will not change substantially. And they, they even echoed that during the live streams that they don't want to substantially change it. At the core, it's, a, it's the same. We're probably going to get a different boss at the end, just like Whisper. Fundamentally, it's going to be the same. That's great. All around Ws. I'm okay with it. Onslaught! Onslaught is probably, like I said, one of the best free-to-play 
activities, but it is also probably one of the best activities I enjoy. Like, I think out of this entire year of paid seasonal content, I think I enjoyed Onslaught the most. You can play normal, and for about 30 to 40 levels, like, you can just screw off, right? You can just do whatever you want, use whatever build you want, and fundamentally, you can just have fun. There's really no stress at, in normal, to, except for toward the later ends. It gets a little more difficult. You're going to have to put some thought into it. I think the, the biggest challenge is the Tormentor, but if you play smart and you play the objective, you'll be fine. In fact, I would like to say that outside, and here's a little bit of a, a con, but it kind of, it's all right. Most of this is positive. A small con ahead of time is the trip mines kind of suck. They, they kind of do. They kind of suck. Now, they don't suck nearly as much in normal, but in legend, they're almost essentially useless. But everything else, the turrets, I was very surprised on my run to get 50 on Legend. Essentially, we had max turrets, we had max decoys, and it, the turrets actually destroy yellow bars. Like, it was crushing it in the support. And the decoys essentially can just stop tormentors in their track. Like, they'll just sit there. There was literally an, uh, a moment where we had the tormentor being babysat. <laughs> by a decoy while we cleared the wave of ads and then we went back to dealing with the tormentor it was crazy but we made it work and that's kind of like the strategy component where you have to determine how much you're going to spend at one at one side of the map are you going to save it there's more thought process going in and this is more or less towards legend than normal normal you can pretty much get away with not buying anything to wave 30 and then you you essentially want to start leveling things up because it will matter because things will be tankier but overall you, there's some strategy there's some thought to it i love that you can be brainless at, to a certain point and then you actually have to strategize so you get to you get to play the way you want to play builds this encourages some build diversity you can't just use solar polaris lance and expect it easy. No, you actually have to think about crowd control and being able to deal big DPS. And the nice thing, and the really nice thing, is that it's not locked equipment. So in Legend, for instance, you can have a ad clear build. Then you can have a build to deal with tormentors. If you know your you a tormentor response, you can quickly hot swap to a loadout to deal with that. During the boss encounter, it is so, you know, every 10, 10th wave, that completion of that set is going to be a boss fight. So you can have a specific loadout and there's a banner that you can pick up. So you can set up your DPS boss loadout, whatever it is for that boss wave, and then swap back to your ad clear build. And this actually encourages a wide, a, you know, wide range of builds to use. You can use strand. It's acceptable. It works. You can use stasis. Stasis works phenomenal, especially warlock stasis. You can use solar, solar titans, strand titans, rejoice, void. You could do bubble. There's I've seen some bu bubble strats where you're just putting a bubble on top of the the capture point to protect it from being shot at, and just spamming a bunch of orb generation for the rest of your team. Arc. I think in this in this specific encounter. Arc is kind of the weakest. Yes, Warlocks have like Arc Buddies, but it is still fundamentally wor worse than Strand and Stasis, and even Solar. Like Wells, we had essentially on our run a Well Lock using Star... Uh, I forgot what the... Uh, it's not Starfire Protocol. It's the other one. Uh, Phoenix. We had running Phoenix, and we essentially just kept getting our supers back by chaining my Tether with their Wells. And it was just... It was a beautiful cycle. But Arc does seem like the weakest link all around. Uh, I would probably only use Arc on Hunter if you're going to use the Pole Dancer one and done. But outside of that, pretty weak. Pretty weak. Arc is the, the, the subclass that you probably want to use least compared to everything else. But build diversity is very strong in this mode, and I love that. It, it really, you can, you can get away with most builds. And just play the way you want to play. You want to use Strand Warlock. You want to use Solar. You want to use Stasis. Even Void. Though I do think the Void Lock is much weaker for ad control. But does have Devour for stability. 
and survivability. Hunter, Solar's good. Strand's good. Stasis, and eh, not so much. Um, but you could still make it work. A lot of options. Overall, a lot of options. Of course, Strand Titan is probably just, you see everyone running around punching things to death. It is still very good. But you have diversity, and that is something that I love about Onslaught. It, it, it's not like a Grandmaster where you're locked in, and that's the only thing you can use for every encounter. No, you can mix and match. You could use one subclass for one encounter. You can swap. Like, if you know at the beginning it's going to be easy, you can have your chill, let's just vibe build, and then when you know you're going to start getting some tankier targets, okay, time to swap off into the more difficult you know, meta loadouts. I can, I have to be a little sweatier. Here's my sweat loadout. So you can mint, have multiple loadouts determining on what set you're on and you can play the way you want. So you're not just locked in. That's the key thing, right? I've been talking a lot, but that's the key. W is a mode that escalates. So you can play normal, casual, however you want. And then when it gets harder, get to the sweaty stuff where everyone's expecting you to be min maxed, especially on legend, but normal, Again, a lot more flexibility for casual. I like the fact that there are like bonus objectives. This is how you get your heavy. I think that's phenomenal. I think having just a little more challenge, like, oh, especially on legend, like, okay, we have a, a, a whole wave of servitors. They're just spawning and you're like, holy crap. But you've got to go off to the distance to stop, uh, the bombardiers or the people who are attacking from a distance or a bonus objective like we want to get some heavy quickly capture that or destroy these splinters like there's some diversity of what you do which is great it's not just the same thing you do some captures you do some at boss fights you do some uh shoot the objective i hope that bungie honestly takes this concept and expands upon it i would like to see more variety of horde modes like this but in more detail truly this is a fantastic game mode all around w if you're new you're a veteran this is something that you will grind out for some time until you min max your roles truly truly good i i hope that they do more to service this after the final shape comes out i i don't want it to become another uh dares of attorney where it it gets maybe an uh, some loot change but outside of that it just is the same thing that just dies off into oblivion I, I would like them to actually introduce more maps and maybe we will whenever uh the next rotation of weapons start pouring in maybe we'll get a new map i don't know but i feel like the opportunity to add new maps once in a while could keep this fresh and i also see an opportunity where they can continue to bring back weapons in the future the dawning weapons any other seasonal sunset weapons this is like a beautiful place to just package it for no like you don't have to do some seasonal weird theme you just throw the weapons in there and have them become a brave variant you don't need to bring specific raids back just especially if they don't have any plans to bring any other sunset stuff back at least they can bring the weapons that we miss and love all right i believe that is probably most of the positive that i can say right off the bit that's my brutally honest opinion on the positives now we go into the negatives we go into the cons listen i've said it before in a video and i'll say it again and i'm not gonna really harp on it but i will state this there is zero reason time gating should exist for this zero absolutely no reason at all because the drop rate at which the shiny weapon variants come out is very low not only is it very low in general the chances of you getting a shiny variant of the gun that you are actually chasing even with attunement is so low i did a hour long run on legend and got zero shinies i think only one out of three of us got one that is ridiculous and i've run multiple 50 runs on normal the drop rate is ridiculous there is no reason that any of these weapons should be time gated because if you were wanting a shiny variant of it the chances of you getting it to drop and then getting the exact gun to drop and getting the perks you want it is so significantly 
low that you probably have a better chance at winning something at like a lottery or a casino. And I know, I know that someone out there is going to be like, oh my God, you want the weapons to just drop too easy? We'll get to that in a minute. Hold your horses. I think if you're going to make things rare, be as it be. Remove the time gating. Release the weapons and let us farm. The fact that this is a time gated and it is a limited time and the drop itself is abysmal. These are like multiple things stacked together. There should be no reason. All right, that's it for the time gating. Let's just address specifically the loot itself. The loot itself is fine. There's some good combinations. I think there maybe was some overhype on certain things. But these are pretty good weapons. I'm not going to criticize the weapons themselves because they're pretty good. I think if you're a new player, there is zero reason for you to buy any of the seasonal content at all. Just play this. You're going to get some good starting weapons to go into the light fall with. Really good. Primaries, heavies, specials. You're going to get a decent kit that you can start out with into the final shape. Zero reason to buy anything, including Season of the Wish. I know that doesn't sound like much of a negative to uh, Into the Light, but I did want to mention that just so you know that I do think that this is worth more your time and your money than any of the seasonal content this year. Outside of the loot itself being okay, the drop rate, again, is disgustingly bad. The drop rate at which the shiny, should I say, is disgusting and i know there's that one person whose i whose identity is destiny it's, oh my god you guys you can't have nice things like you just want everyone to have a handout you just want everyone to say you, 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 you can't do that no you should, should be rare i want you rare you, 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 you. listen listen linda i know that your your personality your identity is tied to a video game but there are normal people out here who have a full-time job and a life whose identity isn't a single game. Can you have things hard, rare? Yes. You can have them hard and rare, but you don't have to make them ridiculous. That's exactly what the, the shinies are. They're ridiculous. I have a better chance. I almost, I'm almost guaranteed you can get someone who's a shiny hunter in Pokemon and have a competition to see who can get a shiny faster. And I'm almost certain the per the person who does the shiny Pokemon hunting will get a shiny faster than you do a gun in this game. The difference is, is that this is a limited time event and you can get shinies all you want in Pokemon. Listen, I think it's cool that it's exclusive. I think it's fantastic that we have something to aspire to, to chase, but it should not suck your soul out to get what you want. It's already a challenge to get it to drop. It's, it's, it's another thing that you're not even guaranteed to get it to be a shiny variant. But also to even get the specific roles you want is even more. So you've like this, this pile on, a pile on, a pile on. You know what my thing is? Don't You don't have to increase the drop rate of shinies themselves, but increase the rate, the rate of getting actual loot. So that on its own will increase the natural ability to get shinies without actually impacting the, the rarity of the shinies themselves, right? It's almost like Pokemon, right? You get, like, say there's, you have to run into 8,000 Pokemon in order to have a chance at a shiny. It's one out of 8,000. Well, you have to see 8,000. So you go to an area and you only see 20 at a time. Well, if you see 30 at a time, you're increasing the chances of getting through that 8,000 faster, right? The same thing can be done for the, for guns. You have a more chance, you have a higher chance of seeing more loot in your system. And I want to call this out because Bungie made a Twitter long feed about loot that this would be. The, I would. I almost want to say that they're lying, that they're liars. But I'm going to say they are at least deceitful in this interaction. They said in their words, and I'm summarizing. I'll put the tweet up there for you. That this would be essentially more rewarding than the coil. And I'm going to tell you, no. It is not at all rewarding. What they are deceitfully leaving out is that you will get quite a bit of drops. The weekly completion where you get drops, just like anything else in a game that has pinnacle drops. The same thing here. You'll get random drops. So it gives the illusion that you're getting a lot more loot. 
But once you've cleared that out and you're just farming, you get literally on normal five weapons and then the bonus chest at the end, which is six for an hour. Then you do legend. You get 10 guns and a bonus chest. So 11 for about an hour and 10 minutes or more, depending on how long you take. That's pretty bad, guys. If you compare that to the amount of time it takes to do the coil, it's not that bad. And you get loot in between. But on Onslaught, in between encounters, you get nothing. In fact, if you die in the in-between, you waste all that time. You don't get rewarded. So it feels even worse. So if you're at 46 out of 50, you just get nothing. I personally think... In a way that they can make this more rewarding instead of just getting a, a base guns is to add loot in, in between encounters. Whenever you go into the pyramid ship, after completing the pyramid, you get a bonus drop. Simple, easy. I think that adds some to it. Even, even on Legend, let it get two chests as a bonus drop. Then instead, if you're getting one in between rounds, you're seeing 22 guns. I don't know if I math that right, but you're getting essentially double on Legend which is something that Legend needs help with. Yes, you get a pretty cool 50 Legend emblem. But after that, there is zero reason to run Legend. You get one extra bonus chest. One. But you go through all that hard work and challenge for nothing but one extra drop. It's the value composition, the risk, all that is not worth it. And it's, it's not just my opinion. The community has literally gravitated to just farming Legend the first 10 rounds. They did the first set rotation, and then they reset because it is functionally and more efficient to farm Legend and just do the first 10 to get double loot. It's faster, and it's about the same as doing normal with the without struggling. Literally, anyone can farm the first 10 and get double chest. Because there's no reason to complete 50 on Legend. There is zero. It's not rewarding at all. And that is a problem. That people are wanting to just farm the first 10 rounds. The first set of this onslaught. Instead of just playing it out. Because the reward's not there. The, the time that you put in. The risk you put in. Because you're not guaranteed to get that third extra chest. If you don't make it through Legend. If you get to 40... You just get another extra drop. So if you think about that logically, instead of trying to risk getting one extra chest by doing more challenging content, I could just do the easy version a bunch more times and always get two chests. In fact, most people are going to be able to blitz through the first encounter and get those double chests much faster than people who would have gotten that bonus chest by doing all 50 encounters on, on Legend. Not only that, most people are not going to want to touch Legend anyways because the difference between Legend and Normal is not that much outside of one extra chest. If you are a normie, a casual, even a veteran like me who just doesn't want to be bothered, farming the first 50 on Normal is so easy, it's a cakewalk. It's a joke. Most and majority of the people are going to spend their time either farming the first set on Legend or they're just going to sit there and casually play on the normal playlist because here's the reality most people just want to play to play and not have to think about it most people who play the game want to have fun so they don't want to think so that's why i would be very interested to see the numbers to, to see if that's actually factual and observing how the community has been in the past most people would rather take the short and easy way and legend is not short nor is it easy so majority of the community who is casual, there's a large part of the community who is casual, is going to be playing normal. And that we do have some numbers. Like if you were to say that the people that are currently playing are more of the veterans, the more diehard, that was about 30k player count. But if you look on Steam charts currently at the time that I am talking and recording, the high, the peak was 92k and currently playing is 89k. And you can see the numbers the last 30 days. There has been a 14 percent or of 5,000 people. Like a lot of people have come back, come to play. These are new, 
these are returning players. These are new players. These are casual people, people who weren't the diehards who were still already playing. So you're seeing an increase in player count. Most of these people are going to be in the normal play set. My point that I'm making that's a criticism is that there is no reason to do legend. It's not rewarding. And the rotations themselves are not rewarding. Uh, they need to make legend more rewarding than the coil. The coil right now has loot in the in-between encounters. Not only that, you can't tell me that one of the harder challenges this year in the legend version where it's supposed to get Oh, they, uh, someone said it was like master or grandmaster level. I feels like maybe master level. I don't know about grandmaster, but it does get challenging when you get up to the to the 50 tier. And you're gonna tell me doing 50 on legend only gives me a bonus chest, whereas the coil gives me like five different chests. Plus, I have the ability to focus a specific weapon. Granted, it's pre-selected, but if it's something I want to choose, I can choose that rather than rng rolling a chest but into the light doesn't even have that functionality which is kind of weird that you're going to tell me that the coil that they say is more isn't as rewarding as in onslaught supposed to be you're going to tell me that doing legend this really impressive feat for majority of the community again if you are you have your clan or you're, you're always on like you're going to sneeze through this i'm not going to i'm not going to be around the bush you're going to sneeze through this the more difficult thing is the tormentor but you can literally just bait it off to fight a a decoy and then deal with it later like yes it's thick it's annoying but you can if you're smart you can literally deal with anything in the game and you can just take your time and sneeze on boss boss rounds oh but most of the people in the destiny community aren't like that they they, they struggle and that's that's normal but overall Legend's not rewarding. It's not worth the time. And that's why you're seeing most people posting about farming. Farming Legend, the first encounter. Because there is no value in doing a 50-run Legend outside of getting your emblem. There are three maps, and I'm a little disappointed. I will give some credit. I do like Midtown. I do like Moth Yard. I do like Bostock. Because they all have different vibes. But I don't understand why moth yards even though it's a, a longer map why they drop everything so sporadic and across the map it's stupid it it, it it fundamentally makes things longer for no freaking reason a ship comes in and it drops two dudes why, why are we dropping two dudes and we're having like five ships fly in and it drops two dudes just drop them all at once like, why is that hard to do? You do Midtown, they're all grouped up. So, like, why can't you do that for Moth Yard? Why? Why does it have to be, there's two dudes on this, and then across the map, there's, like, three dudes. Have fun. It really does suck using any, like, synergy or builds, because if you need to get a group, like, say, for instance, a Tether, you have to wait for them to be on your butt cheeks. And by then, it's a bad idea to do that, because you don't want people on the objective but to take center you know in order to benefit from being able to use like a tether you have to have them grouped up which is not happening in moth yards honestly the best way to get your 50 midtown so easy to do boss talk has its moments i don't like it because again how the map is structured it's a pvp map and it's too easy to just have the enemies hide or come around the corners or flank you it is not a good map for 50s it's fun i like it I'm not complaining about that, but for if you're trying to do 50 Legend, do Midtown. It is functionally better in every regard. But it's also only three maps, and I hope they do add more. I see room for them to add more. If they don't add more, then that's a fat L. If they let this thing die out like every other activity instead of doing some kind of refresh or investment, I know it's free, and I know they gotta make new content, but they could literally add one new map and then maybe two new guns. And that's just like barely adding the bare minimal to this. Another complaint that I have is champions and the sky bombers or whatever you want to call them. The yellow bar bosses. Usually like there's two of them and then even tormentors. We'll talk about the champion. You could be dealing with a unstoppable ogre, by the way. And I'll put like a, a video of someone dying. 
where it just teleports behind you. It sometimes they just teleport. It makes no sense how fast enemies just blitz, especially like the invisible marauders, like their yellow bars, you're dealing with them. You could have turrets, you could have tether, and somehow they'll scurry so fast they, they get into the, the objective and just them sitting there does damage. It is almost stupid how much heavy you have to waste just to kill these things that are just blitzing across the map. And having the, the champion spawn behind you is some BS. I don't know what it is with champions. It happens in Grandmasters sometimes or things just spawn behind you. I don't know why this is continuing to happen in any activity where there's champions. They sometimes just spawn behind you. It's so stupid. And the yellow bars and tormentors, the big boss fights, I like those. Why are they spawning on top of the objective? Sometimes they ignore the decoys completely and you have to like the tormentor you can bait the big boys you can't they just slam and they slam and they slam and they slam they kill you they kill the edu they're just like giant fortresses that spawn right in front of you and there's nothing you can do about it you can't bait them they just sit there and they just slam you you essentially have to just hope that you have a titan on your team that can just nuke them. Like you, if you don't have a tight, a, a strand Titan to just murder these things, you are probably going to die because you're also having ads spawn on top of you. So you have to deal with a wave plus these two douchebags. It's not fun. Even with tether and all this other crap, it's just not fun. I, I, I'm all, all for challenges. You get that spike and that's cool, but it's not fair fun not fair challenge like if they were slowly walking like everything else and you can kind of meet them and have that fight so then you choose do i confront these these bosses meet head first or and then have someone else deal with the ads or do we try to deal with ads by like there's no there's no choices involved no strategy it's just here they are deal with them or you're dead and on legend you're dead if you don't really coordinate as a team like, you really have to focus these dudes, like, immediately. What about the Hall of Champions? What about uh, the currency and the reputation? Listen, I've already hit max reputation. You get, like, some extra trophies. You can't reset it, which is kind of freaking weird. Like, why can't I reset this? Like, why is that not a thing? You can reset every other reputation in the game except for this. So I can't, like, refarm the... The ability to get more trophies, which would have made sense in the long run because you could just keep farming. But apparently getting more weapons is a problem with Bungie. Oh, and the armor. Everyone was like, oh, this is great. I don't care if it's free. The armor is bad. It's trash compared to what we have to pay for. Even like even the paid content we have is trash. But the, the store, the shopping mall armor looks 10 times better. It is god awful. And I've talked to multiple people that I ran with in LG, and they mostly all agree the armor is trash. Another con that I have of the champ, the Hall of Champions itself, is that why is there not a postmaster or a vault space? It's an actual space, which is really cool. Like it has some some secrets and Easter eggs in there. That's dope. But why is there no vault space? Like if this thing's gonna stick around and they say it's gonna stick around then why don't we have a vault and a postmaster? It just, it makes no sense. It's stupid that I have to fly into this and then either I have to go orbit to access my vault or if I need to go to the postmaster, then I have to go to another area. So you're double dipping, which is really freaking stupid. All right, and last but not least, let's talk about Pantheon. Mr. Gaming Counselor, you can't talk about it. It's not out yet until April 30th. You can't talk about it. No, you can't do that. Let's be honest. We have leaks. Spoilers now if you don't want to see them, but we have spoilers. That's right. It's been spoiled that Pantheon is a raid gauntlet that essentially builds from plus five all the way to contest mode. That is right. And each encounter has different bosses from different raids. And completing that encounter gives you, I guess, the opportunity or it's a guarantee that you will get the exotics attached to that boss. So you have Atrex, Sovereign, Eyes of Tomorrow. Th the first boss you fight is Golgoroth, then Caretaker, then the Microchasm encounter. Then you fight Atrex himself. Then it goes to Oryx. Again, from Golgoroth all the way to a uh, Oryx, the Taken King. 
you get Touch of Malice. Rolk, the Indomitable. Goes from Golgorov all the way to Rolk. And then the last one is Nezarak, the Sublime. Conditional Finality. Again, you have Golgorov, the Caretaker, Macrochasm, Atrax. Then you fight Orcs. Then you fall, fight Rolk. Then you fight Riven of a Thousand Voices. Somehow she snuck in there. And then Nezrak, Final God of Pain. Now, I will say that it's already been leaked. The community, someone in the community was raiding on Master and they were doing the, the King's Fall raid. And they noticed that Golgroff had two people who had the, the poison. I forgot what it's called. The, the, the main mechanic, it, it changed. Which means two people had to go dunk and to get rid of it. It's very obvious that this is a change that's coming out with Pantheon, the, the boss gauntlet. So th we can expect that there will definitely be alterations to these encounters. All around, though, the only thing you get for completing these encounters, or these gauntlets, should I say, is emblems. All this is is a glorified catch-up mechanic to get exotics and to get raid weapons adepts whatever you're wanting this is it's just a catch-up mechanic which for a free thing i'm not going to complain what i'm going to complain about is that it's been rumored that it's not a permanent fixture meaning you're just going to miss out after the final shape comes out which is really stupid but overall i know some people are like yes this is what we want this is what we want honestly i'm going to be i'm going to say it I don't think most people really care about this. People would have preferred to just have contest mode in general. The people that wanted a challenge, that wanted uh, loot, special loot, want contest mode. Instead of just turning that option on, we have to do a gauntlet to get to a, a point where some of these bosses feel like contest again. Overall, I'm not going to complain too much about Pantheon. Most of the criticisms I've stated... Overall, I think this is a W. It is a W because people who are new or returning has a catch-up mechanic. And people who wanted a challenge gets to have a last hurrah. Especially if it is temporary, it does suck. And the fact that we don't get contest mode also sucks. But this is kind of like a mini hurrah. This last moment to swing into the final shape. That's cool. Overall, I want to say that this entire, this entire content cycle... It is a cycle because this is essentially like seasonal content loot, but without price package. And it just overall, in my opinion, has more meaningful loot. The content is better outside of the small, the small, the issues that I have with like legend and just the loot itself not dropping as much frequent. I think it needs to be more rewarding, especially in legend. I do think loot needs to drop more frequently, especially compared to the coil where even at base coil, you could farm the first encounters of that and you're still going to get more loot than you do in normal uh, of Onslaught. Overall, I do think there are tweaks that they can make. I do think Onslaught and Into the Light is a fantastic free access encounter activity for everyone. Does it save the game? No. Does it? Is it going to bring people back? Absolutely. The numbers show that people have come either back or trying out destiny this is a fantastic step in the right direction but it's not gonna save destiny that being said hit the like button comment down below we are almost to 600 subscribers and if we're 600 by the time this comes out we're on our way to a thousand gg i'm looking forward to that i'm mr gaming counselor as always don't forget to be the best version of yourself I'm so glad that that controller didn't fling out and hit my monitors. I would have raged my tits off. And with that, game out. I'm Mr. Game and Counselor. Here to spread the cheer. Join me on.